Hello and welcome to another episode of Lockdown. I'm Zebedee Parks and on this episode we're going to be looking at the issue of housing under the coronavirus. And housing and the rental affordability crisis and homelessness are issues that have existed long before the pandemic has hit, but they're issues that have been further exposed by the pandemic, especially when we're seeing images of people in Las Vegas uh, being forced to sleep in, seg- in parking lots where they've drawn up where people are allowed to sleep. And then you compare this to the massive Las Vegas casinos that have been standing empty. And those images circling around the globe have just shown how stark the class divide is between the excess people have to spaces to live safely in. In Australia, a lack of affordable housing has been a growing issue for decades. We're seeing more and more younger generations having to live with parents for longer than they would wish to and have lived for in the past due to not being able to afford the rent to move out. We're seeing a high proportion of people's incomes going to rent and we're seeing more and more people living in precarious rental situations where for instance they're sleeping on a friend's couch where they're not actually on the lease and they don't actually have the rights to someone who is actually renting that place but they can't afford somewhere to rent. The government's response to the question of where do people live at the time of coronavirus when people are losing income significantly and struggling to pay rent payments has been one that has shown it recognizes that there's a problem and that it definitely doesn't want to see thousands and thousands of people living on the streets which would be a major um, way the coronavirus could spread however their actions are not actually doing anything to seriously address this issue We've seen governments announcing that rent payments can be deferred for six months possibly but the issue then ha- is is what happens after six months. I mean, is your rent all accumulated and then you may or may not be able to get your job back if you lost the job during the lockdown? And then even if you can get your job back, are you earning enough to pay six months rent? And when does that six months have to be paid? And when, what powers does your landlord have to evict you if you can't pay that within, let's say, six months worth of rent and two months, even if you got your old job back? And there's a lot of unanswered questions in that sense, which could leave people, whenever they can get their old jobs back, if they can even continue working, depending on how the economy is going and how lockdown measures are going in several months time in a very precarious situation where there could be a whole rate of evictions once the lockdown is over. The government has been saying that renters should be negotiating with their landlord. However, this puts renters in a very difficult situation where what if their landlord doesn't want to negotiate with them? And what if their landlord says no, whatever their situation is? I mean, there's also landlords who may be older people that have one property that's become their main source of income for their retirement in which they could be in a situation where they can't allow renters to have significant cutbacks in rent because that's their main way of living without themselves going homeless during the coronavirus. We know real estate agents have way too much power over tenants today. Something we've seen real estate agents send very threatening letters to tenants saying not to take advantage of the crisis, to scam landlords and that. I mean, as if someone who is really struggling has just lost their job, the first thing they want to do is oh, we'll just take advantage of a landlord and try to defer rent payments. I mean, it's just ludicrous to say that people who are stressed out of financial issues would want to actually take advantage of the situation where many people are in worse situations than they were before the crisis began. Moratoriums announced on rental evictions for the moment is a good measure that has happened. However, as I've said before, it leaves a question of when the moratorium ends, what happens to people who still can't pay their rent? When we talk about the government's response to the housing crisis and the coronavirus, we really need to look back at the years and years of cuts to public housing that have happened, cuts to essential services such as domestic violence services that provide emergency shelter to people, and various other programs the government has significantly cut back money of over the last couple of decades that has left us in a position where there's very little support for people who are struggling to find a safe and secure place to live. This response from the government isn't something that is surprising at all. It's obviously trying to manage the lockdown in such a way that it affects the big end of capital the least, that it affects the big landlord barons the least, that it sort of gives real estate agents the powers to evict people even if they've been temporarily sort of put off for a few months. But I mean, I think the other thing we really need to look at in this question is how has the left been responding? And this is where I think some of the left's responses have been a bit short-sighted at times or a little bit not grappling with the broader sort of picture and what do we do within this crisis. And there's been a couple of actions I know of to stop evictions and they're really good and really good acts of solidarity where people may be driving their cars around and surrounding a house to stop an eviction happening and we need to see more of this happening or people offering support for people who have been forced out of their homes and offering them a place to stay. I mean stuff like that is really good solidarity that's really heartwarming that we need to see more of. There have been calls by some groups on the left for a rent strike. However, I think the way that I've interpreted it as being sort of put forward is quite problematic for a few different reasons. 
One is it doesn't take into account who you're paying your rent to, as in there's a difference if you're paying your rent to a major corporation that owns hundreds of thousands of student housing accommodations, then I think there is arguments in that specific context for a rent strike. However, what if you're paying to a small landlord that someone who themselves is renting a house and they obviously bought this house and they're renting that house while they're trying to pay off the mortgage for it because it's too much for them to afford. If you then can't pay the rent, it would mean they would then be forced to sell the house because they can't afford the mortgage payments on it, which could then lead to a situation where we're seeing a drop in market prices that we see the big landlords that have the accumulation of capital that can then go up and buy more and more property quite cheaply or on the cheap. And as this will just lead to a greater accumulation of property within a smaller number of people. The other thing is the rent strike risk putting people who are already in precarious living situations that if they are evicted and don't have anywhere else to go or a means of finding somewhere else to live, it does put them in a very, it could put them in a very problematic situation. And more than this, it isn't making demands on the state and what the government should actually be doing. It sort of comes across to me as a very individual solution in a sense. There have been some demands for the state to suspend the need for anyone to pay rent payments, which I think is problematic for the reasons mentioned above, that you don't know the financial system situation of smaller landlords, for instance. And if it was to include both rents and mortgage payments, then I think that argument would have more weight, but that still is a bit problematic as it's not sort of addressing what I see as the key issues. And there's also been calls for the government to increase the funding available to people who are in financial hardship to pay their rent. I think this is definitely a good measure we should be supporting. However, my issue with all these measures outlined is that when we look at the coronavirus, there's a lot of talk about how this is an opportunity to reshape society. We're already seeing the big end of town, big capitalists, they're working to reshape it in their interests. But what the left needs to be talking about is how do we reshape it in our interests, of which it's a slogan we often talk about how to reshape it, but what can we actually do? And to me, when we're talking about the question of the rent crisis and the question of housing affordability, we need to be talking about the question of public housing, which is something that I feel has been lacking from this discussion around housing within the time of coronavirus. If public housing is available as a right, something that everyone can access, then it will do two things. I mean, one, it will alleviate a lot of social issues that come about from people not having secure places to live. And secondly, it will put pressure on the rental market to drop its prices to a more affordable level, especially as public housing can be regulated that it only is a percentage of someone's income, for instance. I mean, I hear a lot of discussion around how the market's in crisis and how housing prices are dropping and so forth, which to me means it's the perfect time for the government to go out on a massive investment for us talking about stimulus packages and buying up significant amounts of public housing to actually make this possible to happen. We're in a unique situation in society where people are talking about a lot of issues in ways they haven't addressed up before. And I think we need to be taking advantage of this to be putting forward solutions that are breaking with the norm and breaking from kind of short-term solutions to actually looking at how we want to reshape society and pushing these solutions forward. That we can make the clear argument that society is better when everyone has access to affordable housing, when everyone has access to public housing. Because when everyone has access to housing, it leads to much better health outcomes for society. It leads to a much better society to live in for everyone. If you want to help us do this, consider becoming a supporter of Green Left Today.